Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today, folks, if you want to make some loot, is your day. I've got a real treat for you. I've got double the treat. I've got Mel and Dave Dupuis. Now, is it Dupuis? You're saying yeah. it correctly. Hey, Brad. First time. That's awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much us, Brad. for having it. us. We're excited to be here. So for you guys that might not know who they are, they're number one, can Canadian, which already <laughs> makes them nice, but they're uh, basically real estate tycoons that went out and kicked ass on their own. And now you're basically not only kicking ass in real estate, but you're showing other people how to do it. So, so today on dropping bombs, I want to see if we can get the bomb squad a little bit closer to being, you know, wealthy or create wealth. Ooh, let's Absolutely. Do it. Let me ask you guys a question. You guys, uh, you know, say to create wealth, what's your idea of wealth? What is wealth? Yeah, wealth. And I love that, Brad. Everyone has a different, different, sorry, different definition. Uh, I find it's not having to worry about money and being able to do what you want, right? It doesn't have to mean billions and billions of dollars. Uh, it's just, again, doing what you want, time freedom, location freedom, uh, financial freedom. So that's kind of my quick and dirty. Yeah, essentially, it's a freedom of definition. choice to do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whom you want. <laughs> now, I always advise my my young students in the world to make sure that whoever you're learning from has actually accomplished what you're trying to teach. So I must assume you guys have already, and I already know the answer, created uh, wealth and 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 literally do exactly what you can show people how to do. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have a large portfolio now and we were both able to quit our full-time jobs in our 30s and do exactly that, do what we want and what we love doing every day. How does that feel? <laughs> it feels pretty damn good. It's, li it's what's that word? Li uh, liberating. Liberating. I'm French. It's liber <laughs> liberating as well. Absolutely. Aujourd'hui avec moi. Uh, hey, hey, oui, oui. You <laughs> <laughs> français? Yep. Wait. French Canadian, yeah. I don't, that's all I know how to say. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I know you guys wrote a book, and the book is called Investing Secrets, a no bullshit guide to creating wealth and freedom, which is why I liked it. It says <laughs> no bullshit. Like, is there a lot of bullshit out there? Oh, there's so yeah. many myths and there's so many, um, you know, we hear it all the time. You, you need tons of money to get started. You need amazing credit, you, you know, and, and there's just so many myths that we just wanted to, to be very vocal about um, and, and help people just get started. Uh, because at first we, we were those people who believed it as well. And we never took action because we had limited beliefs. Yeah. And it's short to the point, just kind of like us, right? It's 88 pages. Uh, we didn't want any fluff. And originally, we had like 300 pages, which is, there's nothing wrong with it. But I knew I wouldn't read a 300-page book. I'm an audio book guy. So uh, we chopped it down to 88 pages. I'm a firefighter, right? I, I don't read. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where can people get that book? Amazon or where do they go? Yeah, it's on Amazon or if anybody um, sends us a, a DM, DM, we're all over social media. Um, they can, we can send them a link as well. Now, you guys do know why Canadians say A after everything, right? <laughs> Here we go. No, why? <laughs> the way your country's spelled. <laughs> the country. There we go. And A. 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 So that's my one Canadian. I like it. That's my one Canadian. Well, this is going to be a good show only because, listen, a lot of people are listening to this show because, number one, uh, well, it's funny, but number two is they're trying to get past challenges and situations and stuff that happens to everyday people in everyday life. And then me and my guests get on here and talk about shit. So this is about getting rich, which is why I'm excited about the, the show. Everybody out there, in my opinion, should try their best to get rich with money. You can do a lot of amazing things, make a lot of impact in the world. 
And literally, it amplifies who you are. So if a lot of people say if you get rich, you know, it, it could corrupt you. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. You guys don't I, seem evil. No, it just kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? it? Exposes who you really are, right? If you, if you were a bad person before and you get a lot of money, you're going to continue to be a bad person. But if you're genuine and, I don't know, I think we kind of are, or we are actually. So just kind of. I agree. It could, it could go either way, right? You can either go one way and, and get, uh, you know, end up not being a very nice person and, and being um, not giving anything back, or you can actually use that freedom or that extra money that you have and give back of your time um, to, to, to what you believe in. So let me ask you guys, like number one, how, how long ago you guys get married? How, how long you been married? 2013. So that's what? Seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. Yeah. The, the itch. The itch. <laughs> Seven year itch. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys besties? We are. Yeah. We work together, right? All day, every day. We even share an office, believe it or not. So people think it's crazy, but hey, it yes. works. So you're besties. <laughs> so we're besties. <laughs> Come on. Why you got to call it that? Yeah. I guess we're besties. <laughs> Well, that's what you are. I mean, there's people that work work with their with their husband or their wife, and they're not besties, and they freaking aggravate each other all day, and they don't jump on podcasts together all beaming and shiny. They're all aggravated and shit and tired of each other, but they never say anything. Is that you guys behind the curtains, or, or are you guys just freaking besties? Well, behind behind the curtains, if I get asked to go on a podcast and not Dave, then he'll get a little jealous. So that's what yeah, really they, goes on. They always want it. Mel and not me. I don't get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Brad? Well, it's <laughs> well, it's invest investor Mel and Dave dot com. And it's on IG if you guys want to follow them at investor Mel and Dave. So you guys are like connected or Dave, when I first heard someone say, Hey, I'm going to have Mel and Dave come on the show. I said, who's Mel and Dave? Like, like <laughs> I thought you were like a big, uh, 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 melon guy. Like they were, they were calling you melon. <laughs> well, I do have a big head. So I melt it. Mel, Mel likes to remind me of that. So yeah, maybe that does make sense. Mel and Dave. I'm like, is, is he a watermelon kingpin? Who's melon Dave? <laughs> He's got and the then- watermelon market cornered. Yeah. And then I, and then again, I, I started looking at you guys. I'm like, dude, these guys are a cool couple. How do, how do you, if there's people out there working with their spouses right now, what you got some tips and tricks on basically how to stay happy and in love and engaged. Oh, we, I mean, we, fights, but you guys seem to not fight much. Would I, would I be right? We'll kind of bicker a little bit throughout the day on and off, but we, we laugh a lot where, you know, if, the, if we have an issue with each other, we'll tell each other we're very transparent, but we're very quick to, to get, over, to get yeah. over it and and we you have to us? because yeah we just want to move on to the next thing i think our drive keeps us focused on life's too short to, to be angry at each other are you guys jealous with one another uh when she gets asked of a podcast and i don't <laughs> yeah uh, why are they asking mel not me <laughs> i think uh i, I know think- you don't lie brad i think jealousy in 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 couples is one of the biggest reasons people break up jealousy i used to be a jealous dude where like you know my if my girl wanted to go anywhere without me i was like you know why someone's gonna get you but you know you finally end up growing up well that's awesome man you guys work together work in the same office you got what twin desks no we we, we at least have separate desks yeah. so that's good so, <laughs> we're five so, feet apart yeah, yeah. We're about five feet apart so it's a large in office the room, in the same room yeah yeah well, dude, that's awesome. And not only that, you're building a brand. It's Mel and Dave. Investors, Mel and Dave, folks. And by the way, out of curiosity, I've read, I've read somewhere that you guys have online courses to teach people exactly how to do this. What system are you on? Yeah. And, and when you say system, do you mean which platform? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we use a variety. We have it's kind of combination. So we have we use Kajabi for the platform. We booked a call with yours, yes. the, the VT. I forget exactly what it's called, Brad. Yours was, yeah. No, we booked a call with yours. We love what we what we heard. We never pulled the trigger. No, I want to know. Maybe after Brad's going to get us the. No, after this call, I want to know who you talked to. Oh, we talked to two different people. I have it in Did my they emails. Close you. <laughs> it didn't close us. That's stupid. Maybe we'll Brad will. We'll maybe Brad will. Yeah. Brad's gonna close the yes. deal. Yeah. 
So, so you got a mentoring program, you got there showing people how to do this. Well, how'd you guys end up doing it? I mean, I know that you said earlier before that we, I hit record that you guys were in a car crash or something. Talk about that. What happened? Let's go back before you guys were right. When you guys got married, you weren't rich, you weren't making money, you weren't successful. And then what happened? Yeah. So we, we knew that, um, I was previously divorced. I was a single mom. When we first met, I had two I was uh, two girls in a two bedroom apartment and I knew I wanted to change my life because I just wanted to create freedom for myself and freedom for my girls. And I met Dave, he had the one apartment as well. And we decided let's do this with real estate investing. And we started doing it the traditional slow way of doing it using our own money, but we kept getting roadblocks after roadblocks. And then finally in 20, hold on, hold on. 2017. Hold on, hold on. So when you started buying it with your own money, did you like get books to read or how did you know what to do? We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I it was just, it was trial and error. Um, I, the first, per, the first property I purchased was a mistake. I ended yeah. up having to sell it because it wasn't zoned legally. So I did try to do it on my own at first, but looking back, that was a big mistake that cost me thousands of dollars down the, at the end of the day, because I, I had to sell it. All right. So you learned the hard way. So you started buying it on your own. By the way, folks, for listening, they've bought 12 houses in 12 months, not using a penny of their own money. Is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah, that was 2017. That was after reading uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. We realized, wow, we're doing it all wrong. We were, Dave was a firefighter. He used to work all day, every day. He used to sing when he'd get uh, called for an overtime shift. He'd get so excited. (laughs) And we used to work, work, work. And then we realized, wow, we're trading our time for money. And that book kind of changed our mindset. And that's when in 2017, we decided to use creative financing. And that's when we bought the 12 in 12 months. We topped it 2020 though, Brad. What's that? We topped in 2020 in two months, we bought over a hundred units. Uh, again, none of our own money, right? No joint venture partners. That's kind of, it's kind of our thing is we don't, we don't like sharing. We, we like buying it just us. We have enough, I have enough of a voting member with this guy here. So we're the only voting members on, on all our deals. <laughs> well, I got to figure out how you're doing that. So let's say somebody wants to right now, they're listening to this. They're like, man, I've been waiting long enough. I got to just pull the trigger. I'm going to jump in. What do they do? They want to go start right now buying 12 houses in 12 months and they have no money. Is that even possible? Yeah. And I mean, you do need disclosure. You do need to have a backup plan, of course, right? So if a tenant doesn't pay rent or you need to call a plumber over, so you d- should have at least you know, ten to $20,000 at least in liquid funds to for an, in case of an emergency. But absolutely. And the strategies that we use are a variety of strategies, including seller financing. Um, we use, which is also known as owner financing or vendor take backs. We put here in Canada, it's our- to- Kind of. Yeah. See, again, I, I, you know, I, I I was excited for the show only because, you know, I I have a bunch of real estate questions. Like I'm not big into real estate, which is stupid as hell. Am I right? (laughs) (laughs) We need to talk off the show, Brad. (laughs) We need to get you started in there. Well, I am getting started. That's why I'm like, I'm going to pick their brain. So if I interrupt, it's because I need to know, I need to know exactly how to go buy 12 houses in 12 months with no money, but I'd rather know how do I buy a hundred in two months with no money? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and seller financing is a beautiful thing, right? And people think it's this, why would they want to do it? Uh, they benefit tax wise, right? And, and they get, uh, they get to exit the deal and they get, they, it's kind of like succession planning for them. So many people just don't know how they're going to sell these buildings and get out of them. Uh, so it ends up being succession planning and helping them tax wise. So it's a win-win. Well, where do you find the people willing to carry all the paper and not require you to have a bunch of money? Yeah. And honestly, there are just deals out there. They do it because not because they necessarily like you, but because it benefits them from a tax perspective. And we look everywhere. I mean, it's a real estate's a numbers game. So I'm going to look at what's listed on MLS, but I'm also absolutely going to find some off market deals as well. Because if I'm looking at 20 deals a week and my neighbor is only looking at three, numerically, statistically, I'm going to win and I want to win the real estate. So let's say I wake up today, I want to go find a property where someone will carry. How do I find them? Yeah. And we, a lot of realtors have pocket deals, right? Where basically they're not listed or they're exclusive. So they kind of just have them uh, in limbo where, Hey, if you, if, if a seller comes along or someone that's looking for a particular type of deal, 
uh, and the realtors will, you know, just give it to you because they'll double end it. So th that's typically it. There's also, and again, it's going to sound simple, but we're part of like a lot of landlord associations and things like that, different networking. And so many people, again, want to sell to a fellow landlord because they know it's not going to be tire kickers. It's someone that's been there, done that. So a lot of them are off market, kind of finding them in those types of places. Yeah, and social media. I mean, social media has been huge. When, when we started, we never used to be on social media when we first met. And now we're on every platform, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everything. And uh, we found that the more people know you, the more likely they're either to sell you their property or lend you money because you get to know, like, and trust you. So build your online presence is really, really important as well. Now, if I go buy your book, are you going to teach me step by step how to do this shit? <laughs> it's a basic book. So no, it's it's more of a mindset. Um, it's more of a kick in the you know yes, what, right? We had written the book after the accident. Um, and it was we just wanted to exactly what you said, Dave, just to get a book to get you started, stop procrastinating, get to it. Um, so a lot of mindset as opposed to the actual structure of the creative financing and all of that. But but we do have tons and tons of uh, videos on it on on our YouTube channel. And your YouTube channel is the same, Investor Mel and Dave? Investor Mel and Dave, you bet. Investor Mel and Dave. Dude, uh, so tell me about the car crash. What happened in the car crash? Want me to go? Yeah, you can. I'll go. I'll you tell it. Okay, so, so we were on our way, actually, interestingly enough, to a real estate investing conference. And we, were, uh, we had a shuttle service drive us. So we were passengers in the back seat of the, of the vehicle. And out of nowhere, it happened. A uh, transport driver who was driving carelessly was driving in between all the vehicle. They end up hitting a car that hit us. And we instantly started to roll across the highway four times. It was a three lane highway. We rolled upside down four times. We landed upside down. And it was number one, the scariest day of my life for many reasons, because I have three kids. And it was, I was petrified that you know, they were going to lose their mom and, and Dave. And that day Very was a day that back, it? it does every time, <laughs> every time yeah. we talk about it, I get emotional because it just changed my life for so many reasons. And back then I used to, I was still working. And when we bought 12 and 12, that was the year before. And we did not tell a single soul how we were doing this, Brad. Like we did not, nobody knew how we were buying all these properties. I had the scarcity mindset. My mom even asked me, did you win the lottery? How are you buying all these properties? We didn't want to tell her. And I remember being in the hospital. And of course, we're thinking about the kids and all of that. And I remember thinking about work. Yeah. And Dave, you kind of got mad at I was me. I'm like, why are you thinking about work right now? It's we almost died. Who we cares almost about died. work? And for some reason, I kept thinking about, I don't want to go back to work. And just came, it just hit me. And sometimes things just hit you. It just hit me that, wow, I don't want to work anymore. I ended up being off um, with because I had a severe concussion for, for a little bit. And then that's, I decided I can't go back. And the only reason I had the freedom that day or, you know, during that time to not go back is because I had already created a real estate portfolio for myself. Otherwise I would have had to go back. And I, yeah. that's when we decided, why are we not helping other people doing this? Cause there's certainly nothing special about us. Anybody else can do it. You just gotta get educated, get the knowledge, get the resources and take action. Boom. So, so when you flipped in the car, did it seem like slow motion to you? Yes. And it was a big suburban Brad, thank God. Otherwise we, we you know, we wouldn't be here, but it was, it was definitely slow-mo. It was slow moon. I just remember all the noise. I can remember that like, this yeah. noise of cement against metal is, is the worst sound ever and rolling and thinking that it has to, this has to be it, you know, just stop the vehicle, please stop. And, and then we finally landed, we were upside down and, you know, I remember screaming to her, but don't get out, don't get out of the vehicle because it was, on a major highway it was a major Toronto, highway. Right? People were flying against us. And I thought if one of us gets out, the driver or Dave or myself, we're going to get hit and and luckily every everyone survived the crash um all the the police officer officers can't believe that that we actually survived the crash it's just they say it doesn't make sense you should not be here today wow that's scary you know the reason i asked if it was slow motion because one time i was on a highway it was raining we hydroplaned and we, we were going about 60 70 we started spinning towards this car spinning hydroplaning and everything look slow motion and and i could see us going to hit the other car and i could see the other person in the car with their eyes wide open and um we ended up 
you know, crashing, but that's the only crash I've ever been in. I was in the back seat, some the person driving the hydroplane, but everything was slow motion. So I always wonder, you know, is everybody slow motion? So yours was slow motion too. It was yeah. slow motion. And I remember thinking so many things. I was thinking, thinking, okay, am I going to die? What's going to happen to my three kids? Like just, I had, although it happened in, in milliseconds, I uh, had the time to reflect on, on, on my life, on my, my three kids, what's going to happen to them. Just so many things entered my mind. That was crazy. And so when, and so when you were done, you're, you're like, you're sitting in the hospital thinking about work. Fortunately, you already made some investments. And so you didn't have to, you know, rush back to work. So is that when you guys decided, screw it, we're going to go out and get these hundred or when, when did that happen? Well, that's that weekend we decided to write the book. It didn't really hit us, right? We still made our way to Niagara Falls and went to the real estate conference. Well, we had decided, you know what? We're not going to let this. Screw that yeah, driver. Screw right? the, He's not going to ruin our <laughs> trip. Him. The we're kids still were going to do it. The kids were home. We were very sore, of course. But we thought we can go home and feel sorry for ourselves. Or it's going to be date here. weekend and that driver's going to ruin it, right? We're, we weren't going to stop. <laughs> so we still went to the conference. We had no vehicle to get us there. We had no luggage, like no clothes, anything. We we're like, you know what? We're just going to figure it out. So we got another shuttle service. We, we, we went to the conference. We went shopping that night. Dave found like one shirt that fit him his size. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, we decided that weekend, you know what, let's do it. And we, that's when we decided to, to write the book. And then shortly afterwards, we started helping other people um, create their own freedoms. And, and right now, like if, 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 if a million people wanted to learn this, you're, you teach these people not only online, but you coach and mentor people. We do. We, we set it up where we're, we, we still are very hands-on with our mentees because it was important to us to really answer their own questions and all that. So yes, they, they get videos, they get content and all that. And then they can ask us questions in our exclusive Facebook group as well. It's called the Action Mentoring Program. So they get ex, um, exclusive access to that as well. And we go live with them once a week and answer questions. And the results have been amazing and that's why you know we're on mission to continue to grow because it really is it's not just throughout a program throughout a program it's the results that we're getting inside the program that has just been absolutely amazing well let's try to walk through it a little bit right here on the show how about that like just sure. pretend i'm your student i've got like an 830 credit score nice nice oh so, awesome credit but i have no money how do i go buy houses yeah. So we'll just teach you about creative financing, right? So the, the seller financing is, is pretty much the, the most common um, where they're going to hold. Yeah. They're going to hold mortgage for you. Right. So there, there's two types. <laughs> there's two types, right? They're going to either hold the first mortgage, uh, which is going to be like the lion's share of the financing uh, and that they have to have the building paid off, right? The bank won't share first place or there'll be a second mortgage where, they are basically your down payment. And that's the one that we typically find the most because then it allows us to, the downstroke is covered by the seller. And then the, uh, the, the financial institution that allows creative financing gives you the other, the first portion. So that one's the really, the biggest one, the go-to one. Yeah. And if it's a no, like if I find an amazing deal and the seller, cause not every seller is going to want it. Some people want their money back and that's fine. If I find a cash flowing property, that's amazing. I'm not going to take no for an answer. There's different ways that you can still get the deal finance hundred percent without having to use your own money. And, and it's various strategies such as using somebody else's 401k for those from the United States or for those who live in Canada, it, that's equivalent to our RSPs or TFSAs. Um, so that's another way of doing it or just the old traditional way as well of, of using private lenders. And people will say to us often, well, yes, but you, you pay higher interest than I do. And yes, you are right. I pay more interest than, than the typical um, person, but I was able to buy 12 properties in 12 months and solely owning them. We don't have any, we don't have one joint venture partner. We purchased 119 apartments last year during the pandemic when most people was holding back, you know, in fear and everything. And we still moved forward to that again, using none of our own money through creative financing. I, I just had COVID right there a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one you just talked about, it's ultimately trying to convince the owner of the property to get a second on their own home as your down payment. Yeah. And again, they're, they're still going to be selling it to you. Um, so they're and still selling. And then you, and then you make payments on the second mortgage and the first. Correct. Yeah. So 
the institution or whoever gives you the first mortgage, right? So you pay them every month. And then the, the seller has a second mortgage and you pay them every month. And the reason they do that is it, it benefits them tax wise, right? Because whatever portion they hold for you, Brad, as a mortgage, they are not receiving uh, that year and they're not being taxed on it, right? They can spread it up to five years so, and they make interest. So that's the thing, right? You just sold me a million dollar property and you're going to pay through the nostrils right on taxes. So if you hold a mortgage for me, you get to, you know, spread that, uh, that tax burden over X amount of years while you're making interest on it. So that's why they do it. You have to talk to the owner of the home to negotiate <laughs> this or the realtors familiar. You know what? Sometimes we haven't even met the person who's holding it. The realtors negotiate it. Uh, sometimes they don't even look into us. They don't even pull our credit or anything. They hold the second mortgage and you know, we don't even meet them. Yeah. What we find quite often, if there's resistance is that we show them our exit strategy, right? So a lot of people, they may not want to do it because they're afraid, well, how do I know you're going to pay me back? Um, okay. I understand the benefits of doing it, but we show them our exit strategy. And again, this is kind of numerical. We, we use our cash flow matrix. It has a four-way pillar on one side where the race to make sure the ratios make sense. And on the other side, it shows whether or not we have the exit strategy and the exit strategy is how we're going to pay them back, right? So we, it needs to be pre-calculated because you're using other people's money. You should know this before you enter the deal. So we know this ahead of time. There's some deals out there. I mean, that comes our, to our desk all the time that, hey, I'm willing to hold 100% financing for you. And the ratios might make sense, but we don't buy the property because we don't have a clear exit strategy. So if anybody's listening, thinking, hey, this is exciting, I want to do this. Yes, it is. But you know, there's some due diligence here that also needs to happen to make sure that you're setting yourself up and that you're setting your lenders up for success as well. Here's all I've, here's all I've, every time I hear, you know, buy houses, no money down, believe me, I'm like an old man. So there used to be an infomercial said, hey, buy money, no money down. So I know that it's possible. What you guys are talking about is finding creative ways to finance, creative financing. And, and ultimately you're saying that there's a lot of deals out there. Now you're in Canada. Are you doing this in Canada or the U S? Uh, like well, our, yeah, the mentees in our action family yeah, are doing it North America wide. We're starting to look into Florida. I don't know why I've got a soft spot for Florida, but uh, we go, I, we go there every year with the kids, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're looking in Florida to expand as well. We're working with the attorneys and the accountants there to, to start doing the exact same thing, but Brad, it, it works North America wide, right? A little bit of differences here and there between Canada and the States, but 95% of things are the same. Well, here's as your ideal customer, I would be sitting there thinking, number one, how do I find them? Number two, how do I negotiate them? And then number three, how do I ink them up to where it's all legal beagle and it's like legitimately mine and they can't change their mind as long as I'm making my payments and all that. So those three steps, how do I find them? How do I negotiate them? And how do I ink them up? If I were to come to you guys and pay you whatever it is you charge me to coach me and mentor me, would you teach me those three things? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different strategies for each one. That's And that's the thing, right? It's not just one strategy, only do this and it works. Um, with creative financing, there's so many different ways of doing certain things and it doesn't work necessarily for each property. You need to adjust accordingly for, for based on the numbers. Yeah, well, those are details. Devil's in the details, of course, and so are the dollars. Dollars yeah. are in the details. But yeah. but in my mind, and I'm, and I'm probably, I would say, the average thinker, meaning everybody's probably thinking in their head. Cause I always wonder to myself, if, if this is so easy, how come everybody doesn't do it? How come everybody's <laughs> not out there doing this shit? Like, are we all stupid or something? And then it's no, that's not the truth. The truth is most people don't believe they have limited, they have scarcity mindset. Like you were saying you used to have, that's most people's problem. But, uh, but then I think, well, what would I be thinking if I didn't know these guys and I was just listening to their pitch? Like, what would I need to know? Not all the details, but here's what I'd need to know. I'd need to know how to find these deals. Who's willing to do it? That's first, right? If you said, Brad, here's 90 people that will literally do exactly what I just said with you. All you have to do is sign all the paper and be responsible. You know, are there 90 out there? How do you find them? Number one. Number two, once I do find them, how do I negotiate them? Like, because you guys have negotiated a bunch. So there's probably all kinds of details and negotiations where, where I get a good deal. I don't get reamed and you know, it's a win-win for me and the owner. So how do I negotiate them? And then lastly, 
what paperwork is necessary to ink them up properly to where like all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. If you guys said, look, Brad, I'm going to show you exactly how to find them, exactly how to negotiate them. And I'm going to show you how to ink them all up to where all you got to do is put in the work. Dude, everybody would be stupid not to go right now. <laughs> and, and do that. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, it's a step-by-step step, um, because there are a lot of strategies and the, there are a lot of, a lot of methods and, and it's showing them and also having the right tools and the right strategies. And I mean, that's only part of the puzzle, right? Then you need your business structure and you need to set up your team and you need the right resources and you need the right kind of conditions. And there's so many, it's like a real estate investing is like a puzzle and there's some, let's pretend there's some bigger pieces and smaller pieces, but at the end of the day, you still need to all the, all the pieces in order to be successful. What I find too, Brad, is people don't ask. They're so scared to ask about owner financing or creative financing. They're afraid of the no's. Like think in the States, there's Zillow and LoopNet. All these deals are listed. They might not say that there's creative financing, but what's going to stop you from asking? What's going to stop you from asking your realtor to... So how do you find them? What's that? Sorry? What does that sound like? Let's role play. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm, I'm a realtor representing a beautiful $2.2 million home you're interested in. Call me and and, and see if there's creative finance. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, is Brad there, please? Yeah, this is Brad. What's happening? Hey, Brad. It's Dave Dupuy calling um, from such and such realty. Just wanted to talk to you about your $2.2 million beautiful place for sale. Do Do you have a couple of minutes? Yeah, what's up? Awesome. So Brad, yeah, we're looking at, uh, we're looking in the area, we're looking to purchase, uh, obviously yours caught our eye and we just wanted to have a conversation, see what uh, you're open to. And, and if you're aware of, or if you're open to creative financing at all. Uh, not really. I'm open to 2.2 <laughs> <laughs> million. All right. I'll bring 2 million. How am I supposed to go buy another house? If I don't get my equity, my equity, Equity. If I don't get the equity out of if I don't get the equity out of this house, I, I I can't go get my dream house. So, and see that, and in that scenario, Brad, that would be a no for us, right? If if someone says I need every single dollar out of it, Bob. then we, well, yeah, I'd move on to the next one. There, there's well, there's a whole whack of other ones well, out there. Hold on, well, well, we went, we might, might move on to the next one for seller financing, but this is where the other strategies come in, right? So that's is where I would look for private lenders, maybe Correct. to help fund the deal or use somebody's RSPs or use somebody's 401k to fund the deal. So, and, and again, having that no, you're going to ask a lot of people and you will absolutely get some no's. That's just the reality. It doesn't work for everyone. Some people need to pull out their money, but some people, <laughs> they need help. They don't want the huge tax burn. So you're actually, sure. this actually becomes a very positive transaction for them. Especially if it's an income, pro- if it's your house, obviously you won't have to pay uh, taxes, but if it's an income property, unless you're using the 1031, you're going to pay tax, right? You're going to pay uh, capital gains and all that. So that's what we buy. We always buy like, the come on, Brad, thing. you're supposed to say yes in that scenario. <laughs> hey, from what I hear, from what I hear, 1031 exchanges were going away for a split second, weren't they? Well, yeah, I did hear that too, actually. In Canada, yeah, we don't right. even have it. So yeah, we don't have you it. So, are... we're, so we're used to that. <laughs> yes. Well, you guys don't have a lot of things like you don't have a military really. <laughs> and we don't have heat either. So uh, it's cold. It's, it's winter here. Yeah, you don't, don't have heat <laughs> we don't have any sunshine <laughs> that's why we that's why we always go visit pale i am brad you know, i always joke about canada dude but i love canada like dude canada's kick ass like i'm from the pacific northwest so i'm used to mountains and trees and shit and i haven't been all over canada but every time you know i've been in vancouver i think nice. toronto dude it's freaking beautiful up there everybody's speaking english so it's not like it's not like i can't couldn't understand anybody. i can literally i can literally move to vancouver tomorrow and it wouldn't i wouldn't even blink an eye i love canada now i don't know where you guys live where do you live we're in north bay ontario canada we're about three and a half hours north oh, of toronto i would move there <laughs> come on come on give it a shot <laughs> okay so you say you say so that might be an opportunity to go find private lenders so when you say private lenders basically what you mean is you're going to go find a rich uncle a friend somebody that does have the money to put the down payment yeah and quite often it's not the friends and family that's going to lend it out to you it's going to be somebody who loves real estate who has money but don't want to necessarily do be that? doing what we do how do you Sorry. find them we, 
we tell everyone we know, like we went to the dentist lot the other week and like, we're, we're telling people there, Hey, if you know someone who has uh, funds that they're looking to invest in real estate, we'll pay you a finder's fee, the lawyer's office. We say, Hey, if ever someone comes into an inheritance, anything like that, just give them our name, our number, anywhere we go, we're just kind of literally leaving uh, little bits of info. And then people will call us. They'll say, Hey, I've got an inheritance. I've got money. I just sold my place. I don't know what to do. I cashed in my pension, all sorts of different things like that. They want to invest in real estate, but they don't want to deal with tenants or the the day-to-day. So it's just being vocal, honestly, literally everywhere we go, we just talk about it. Dude, I agree. Closed mouths don't get fed. So, (laughs) so you go, you go and you try to, you know, basically amass the money in another way, but you still get the property. You still yeah. do the deal. So let's say you exactly. said no, Brad. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, do you, I mean, do you do it in your name? So like if I'm the, if I'm the owner of the house and I agree with you, I'm like, okay, I'll do creative financing. I'll go get a second on my own property. I'll take that $400,000 as your down payment. Cause I want 20% down on the house. Right. The first you say, I can't owe anything on the first. What if I still owe the bank on the first? then you, you would have to pay it out on, on the sale. And, and again, you wouldn't still own it, Brad. Like we'd buy it from you. So our LLC would own the actual property. And then let's say you had a mortgage, you would have to pay it out or you'd have to have it paid off in order to hold the first, right? Because the banks, they don't like share in first gotcha. place. So, but yeah, gotcha. so, so we, so we so, would actually own it and you would have a mortgage on it. Just like when you buy a, you know, a place, right? The bank has a mortgage on it, but you own it. Yeah, yeah. So, so if they owe it to the bank, Obviously, that being paid off is when you purchase it, you have to have credit with your LLC then, no? Yeah, or you just personally guarantee it, right? They, they put their, their clause into you that way. You personally guarantee the debt that the, the LLC if is. Sucks. If your credit sucks, you're screwed then. Not necessarily. It's just you're going to have to, they're going to give you a lower loan to value. So um, a lower first mortgage, or they're going to give you higher sucks. interest rate. What's that, sorry? Even if your credit sucks, they still finance you? Well, I'm not saying everyone, I'm not saying if you haven't paid anyone, you know, since you're 20 years old and you're in, in your collections and all that, you might not qualify, but. And with uh, multifamily as yeah. well, if you're looking at five units and up, they're going to take part of that income to consideration as well. So that's going to help. The asset qualifies. Exactly. And you're just kind of supplementary to it. You guys make me want to go out and get in real estate tomorrow. <laughs> I might be <laughs> case studies and I'll get you a bunch of business. There you hey, go. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Let's collaborate. The good, news, the good news is, is I have money and credit and connections and backers. Like, in other words, I got a lot of rich friends, but I wouldn't want to like do it day to day unless I was retired from my business. You know, is how much time does this take for you guys every single day? Explain yeah. your day. You wake up in the morning around 11 o'clock, you stretch yeah. out. <laughs> Grapes are blowing. You got a little music in the wind. The children are playing outside in the grass nicely. Yes, not Father quite. With the, with the pitcher of orange juice. What, what happens? Well, we, we usually wake up to our little six-year-old who comes uh, for a little snuggle first thing in the morning. He's up really early. Um, and then uh, we, we usually, we have three kids. So it's, it's uh, we get them ready for school. We work we ca- in between while they're eating breakfast and all that. We do a home workout. And, uh, and then once they're off to school, then it's time to, to crush some business and we get to work, but we absolutely don't do it alone. We have certainly a team who helps us with property management and with viewings and with emails when it comes to, to tenants and all that. We have a full-time financial controller. We have an assistant. We have a lot of virtual assistants as well. So there's a lot of different people. You can't grow on your own, right? You're going to end up being your own bottleneck. And that's something you never want to do in business. If you want to grow, you need a team. I'm a bomb. I'm a bomb that again. <laughs> there's no such thing. There's no such thing as a self-made millionaire. I keep telling people that, you know, I'm self-made. You're not self-made. Nobody's self-made and you can't get there without a team. Like period. If you guys want to write something down during this podcast, that's what I recommend you write down and focus on it every day of your life. There's no such thing as a self-made millionaire and there's no way you're getting there without a team. And I'm talking about getting there. If it's a substantial spot, you can get, you can get fairly far without a team, I guess, but you're not going to grow huge and, you know, be to the level you want to be. So Mel and Dave, what is your goal? Are you looking to eventually have like, you know, a million dollars a month coming in and in cash flow, or what's your goal? 
Michael, I, I mean, yes, I, of course, I want to continue to grow my, my cash flow. I want to keep changing lives. I love that. It gives me purpose. Um, I love seeing the freedom that I have, but also that I'm helping other people create for themselves as well. My, <laughs> I'm getting more bombs. I'm name. getting more bombs than you, Dave. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> he'll, he'll get jealous hey, so, again. So, so with a hundred, how many you got now? 170? Doors. Well, now we're over 200, over 200 now. Yes. Since we've lost, uh, since yeah. I gave you my bio, it kind of changed a little bit. <laughs> Any single family? Only one. Only one. Yeah. I mean, okay. Just one out of, so you have 199 doors and one single family home. It's over 200 yeah. apartments and only one of them it's, is this. It's that first house that first I ever one bought. Had, yeah. yeah. And we still have it. Now, uh, I, you know, you, I don't know if you follow me a lot or not, but you know, I'm obviously buddies with old Grant Cardone. So he has thousands and thousands and thousands of apartments, but he's totally against single family homes. Would you echo that? Or would you think someone could go out and actually make a living with single family homes too? Yeah. And I, and I, I obviously follow the first time I, I came across you, Brad was when he picks you up in his white, uh, is it a phantom? I forget on the way to the studio. That's the first interview I ever saw with you. So that's how I came across, uh, came across you. And it's funny because he's trying to get you to say things and you're, you're staying a little bit reserved. Anyway, that, that was a good one. But um, is, that I where see- I, is that where, is that where he asked me about my wife and I said, well, it's hard to answer if you're only 14. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Anyway, you, you, it, it was very funny. I liked it. But he's like, uh, he's like, he's just joking. She's not 14. Well, of course I'm joking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I see what he's saying with, uh, I think he's six, 16 units and more or above, sorry, in order for management and all that. But uh, I, you know, I agree and disagree. A lot of people make, I don't buy single family dwellings, but I know a lot of people that make a lot of good money in it. Depends the market, depends what your goal is, depends, you know, how you're financing them. But we like multifamily buildings as well. Have you ever heard of Chris Crone? Yep. Yeah, he was on. Yeah, we were watching that this morning. You, you and Chris Crone. Yeah, we're and we're buddies on Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah, so I I didn't dive into it deeper. I'm gonna have him back on to dive into the single family home because he's he's doing it with single family homes more than he is apartments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and part of it is, is finding what, you know, what do you like? I prefer multifamily properties because at the end of the day, if I have a fourplex and one of my tenants don't pay rent, I still have rent coming in from my three other um, tenants. That's why we personally prefer multifamily, but it is a personal choice and, and picking your lane is really important as well. Yeah, I like, I like that. I like where <laughs> if you know someone's not paying rent or someone moves out, you know, you still got three other people throwing that money in there. The whole goal of this is to leverage the bank's money, put as little money of yours down possible, and then just ultimately, uh, you know, you make the cash, you make the spread on the cash flow. So like, for example, if uh, I'm collecting 15,000 in rent and I owe 10,000 for the building, I make 5,000 and there's no broken shitters and all that. I make 5,000 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Is that and, the goal? Uh, 100%. And, and the thing that we love the most, Brad, is everyone's always saying, I mean, I'm making this much on my money, you know, that return on investment. But the fact that we're not using any of our own money to get into the deal and the fact that it continues to pay us every month. Uh, is just infinite return on investment. That, that's what we love about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't well, want, twi- I don't I want twenty percent profit anymore. Twenty percent is not good enough. I want infinite return on my investments. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I think everyone should go get your book and look you guys up because you're talking about you know showing them ways to find other people's money to let to lend. I wouldn't know the deal. I wouldn't know if it was a good deal. Hey, give me the three hundred grand and I'll give you how much return. Like, there are people that'll do it. I know that, but you know you could probably teach me a lot in how to negotiate that. See, it's how to find them, how to negotiate them, and then how to ink them up. That, those are the three main things. Like the only reason I've never actually went out there and gotten the real estate game. Well, number one, I've been busy doing other shit, but <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to get a lot more time on my hands. And I'd like to, you know, seriously take a, st- a good look at it to where if, if you can take my money and do it for me, that's even better. But but obviously you're getting a piece of that pie. So, cause you're doing the work. So what's my return? Let's talk about that. What's my return on that investment. And then, and then, uh, you know, going out there doing it myself, what's the spread. In other words, I go with you, I make X, I do it myself. I make what? 
Yeah, for sure. And we don't take, we don't take any of it, right? Like we, we show you how to do it and then you end up doing it. So we do, we don't want to, what's the saying there? We don't want to give you a fish. We want to teach you how to fish. Yeah. But you'll, you'll, um, you'll take my so that's money. Kinda, you'll take my money and invest it too. Won't you? Yeah, we, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I didn't know that's what you meant. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing with that, Brad, is when we meet with private lenders, it's more of a listening, right. Than, than, than talking, it's going to be, what are you looking for? How long of a term, uh, is it secured funds, right? Is it a 401k or is it cash? Uh, what type of, what ta- like what, what interest rate are they charging? Yeah. Like what's the spread? In other words, if I take from you the knowledge and go apply it myself, for example, only I do 21% return, but if I invest it with you, you're giving me 6% return. So that'd be, there'd be a, you know, a spread there. In other words, do it yourself. You'll make an additional 10%. What's doing yeah. it yourself make you? And and honestly, it's a diff, it's really a difficult question to answer because it really depends of the deal, right? Some pro because it's not just about the money you're making every month. It's also about the appreciation you get from some properties. I have some properties that make me a hundred hundreds of thousands of dollars within a couple of years. Not to mention um, deep none of not my to own mention money. Taxes. Can't you write off all the Sorry, taxes? Yeah. Well, that's the thing with uh, real estate, right? That's what we love the most. You can make a lot of money, but then with depreciation, like the tax system, not that it's written for it, but it really, really favors obviously real estate. And especially when you have it in LLCs and you have entities that are, you let the accountants do their thing. But that's what I love the most about is you get to keep a lot of the money, right? See, see, there's more to it than most people think. That's what I'm trying to get out is so people (laughs) understand. Not only do you get the cash flow, not only do you get the appreciation, but you get to keep most of the money if you're properly set up and 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 just take advantage of the tax loopholes for for owning real estate. Yeah, and I mean, our I why agree. was to pass it on as well to, to the kids, right? So it's that generational wealth. When you set yourself up from the beginning with your LLCs or in, in Canada with with your corps, um, you can set yourself up where you get all these amazing tax benefits, and you can also pass it on where it truly is a gift to you know to to your kids or whoever you want to leave it for um, down the road. And 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 that's what I love about it. It's not just providing a freedom for us, but I know that, Hey, if something were to happen to us, at least financially, I know that my kids are set up for life financially. How many go, how many doors do you want to have? Like 20, like 200 doors. Let's say you're making a hundred a door. That's like 20 grand a month in passive income. Where if, if you never got out of bed, you're, you're covering quarter million a year, regardless. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, like we had set a goal of a thousand doors in, in five years, and I think we're about a year into that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I it's fun. Like, it, it, real buying is real estate is probably more. Is a hundred dollars a good number? Is that a good average per door? In, it depends. In positive monthly cash flow. It depends where you invest. For us. I wouldn't be happy with that, <laughs> um, but it depends of, of the market that you're investing in. If you're if you're in a hotter market, yeah, a hundred dollars a door might be fantastic. If you're going in secondary markets like Dave and I go after, then yeah, that I wouldn't be satisfied with that. Nice. So so when you, when you guys take when you guys take over an apartment building, are you allowed to change the name of the property? Uh, yeah, you can. You can change, you know, depending. Yeah, like we've changed a few. One was the cornerstone, and we called it the Belmont. Uh, yeah, the, it, dep- it depends a- on the municipality, the township, the county for for you guys. It just depends, right? Bylaws. I don't know. It depends. What's that? Sorry. That'd just be part, that'd be part of the fun of buying it. I agree. You know, I like I changing bought, names. If bought, like, yeah, if I bought like a complex and it was called, you know, you know. Aubrey Downs, you know, and I change, I change it to whatever I want. You the know, Bradley. Now, it's, now it's, it's no longer the Aubrey Downs apartment building. It's now, you know, Kendall Towers. Yes, but we recently I, purchased the oldest uh, building in our city. It's a 50 plex. And uh, anyhow, that's why we've been going back and forth because the name's been changed a few times. And uh, anyhow, you want to do something very, uh, very Just put cool your mark that, on it, yeah. right? Yeah, well, not only that, but you you then raise the price. If it were me, I'd buy a unit, I'd I'd you know improve it somehow, some way, and I'd raise the price like instantly because that exponentially raises the value. No, 
Yes. As long as there's not already tenants in there, and depending where you are investing in, there are rules and regulations. So you do have to be careful to make sure to follow um, the regulations with the Tenants Act, depending again, which province like, or state. We're yeah. in Ontario and it's a, it's a very tenant leaning uh, yes. province. So, I, but some province, you know, some states you can do what you want, right? Some provinces you can do what you want. Yeah. Just, just know that ahead of time before getting into it. So are you, are you allowed to increase it or are you not? Well, I guess, see, this is, a, this is why you need to get a coach and a mentoring group or a couple like yourselves that literally will walk people down this. Otherwise you could get your nuts in a bind. No. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty quickly. <laughs> We've made so many so, mistakes. I mean, when we bought the 12 and 12, we thought we knew what we were doing, you know, we're on a roll, we we're doing all these things. And then all of a sudden fast forward a couple of years, we speak with investor focused Lauren, and they're like, your structure is completely off. So then we had spent literally hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars having to switch it all. So I love the saying, you don't know what you don't know, because it's so true. One mistake can quickly, you know, end up costing you tens of thousands, if not more when you're in real estate. Now, if I hired you guys to mentor me, would, would I avoid all those fees? Cause you show me basically how to get past them all. I, we're going to do some one-on-one -on -one with you. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys were here today because we might end up being partners. Hey, partners. I'm all in. Well, uh, you guys would have to get off Kajabi first, but. <laughs> Let's make it a win-win. I'm in. I, I'm up for conversations. Me too. So, so what about um, bad credit, tax liens? Um, What's another thing that would harm you? Uh, we have like, a lot of people. Oh, I didn't know you could. You can't do it. You can't do it. I didn't know you had tax liens. Oh, you can't do it. I didn't know you were a 410 Isaac score. What are some other dangers where if people are listening, they're like, I want to do this, but you know, they can weed themselves out. Uh, people that have truly zero dollars, right? Like we, we like to say have at least 10 to $20,000, whether it's cash, credit card, line of credit savings, Right? What if you buy a place, truly no money down, you're going to need to pay the attorneys, right? Closing costs. What if a tenant doesn't pay you and, and, and you end up you know, going belly up? That's the last thing I'd want to help someone do. So uh, yes, can we show you how to buy with other people's money? Absolutely. But you should have some cash because things happen all the time. Yeah. Right? And that back of money, it's difficult to put a number on it. How many properties are you buying? Are you buying a duplex or are you buying a 50 plex? Well, you should have more backup money if you're buying a 50 plex because chances are something will go wrong or repairs will be more expensive or tenant might not pay so having that backup is is for sure absolutely crucial as well why is the property owner selling to you if it's such a great investment well maybe they're ready to retire some people you know they've done their journey and and they're done especially with covid a lot of people are just done with it right yeah it does and people ask that if it's such a great investment why are they selling it well Anything. You could say that to anything, right? You could say that to restaurant owners. You could say that to other businesses. Sometimes when they're done, they're done and they want to, maybe their kids didn't want a lot of people. They think mm -hmm. they're going to pass it on to their kids succession planning. Right. And the kids don't want it. The, the millennials are saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't even want to own a house, let alone, I want to take care of someone else's building. So uh, those, those boomers are selling them to, to people like us that actually want to take on buildings. So uh, it's a win-win. Do you guys still use other people's money or are you starting to use your own now? Now, Other. We, it's got to be infinite, Brad. It's got to be infinite <laughs> return on investment. Otherwise, we don't want to touch it. And the only way to do that is with other people's money, right? And again, we use our own money as a, we'll, we'll use our money once in a while. So let's say for renovations, yes. right? So let's say we buy a property and it needs not on your countertop and, and certain things. Yes, we'll, we'll use Depends our own money. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. But at the end of the day, if we want to continue to grow at a massive rate, the best way to do so is continuing to, to use and leverage the same way that you leverage your team, right? We talked about that earlier on the show that you want to leverage other people's time in order to grow and become a millionaire and do all these great things. Well, if you want to grow as well, leveraging money is, applies the same way. The more you leverage when done wisely and strategically, the more you're able to grow. Hmm. Now people are listening in Canada and the U S so either <laughs> where Either place they are, Canada or U.S., you can help them. Yeah, True. absolutely. Well, folks, if you guys are paying attention, you got Mel and Dave who 
One was a fireman. What were you doing, Mel? I used to work uh, in program development at, at our local college. But you weren't rich. I wasn't rich. We were paycheck to paycheck. And I taught a couple of fitness classes on the side. <laughs> Fun fact, on the side too. <laughs> yeah, so, so two normal, everyday people just living life decide, hey, let's go do this. And it is possible for anyone to do. If you guys are listening to this and you're sitting there with your spouse or by yourself and you're not seriously considering getting into real estate, I think there's something wrong with you mentally. <laughs> I mean, because dude, listen, everybody should be in real estate. Like I've heard it from enough people, saw it from enough people over the years. Wasn't smart enough to learn it myself until recently, a couple of years ago. Um, I was just about ready to buy this uh, property over here. I found, and I bought an RV dealership instead because it was already cash flowing, and I knew I could, you know, triple the numbers, and it was just a great investment. So, so I'm looking right now. I'm gonna call you guys offline. Two reasons: number one, I got to get you off this. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys truly want to train people, you want to create a system, not just a video. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And then, secondly, you know, I'm open to uh, either coaching me through some of them or partnering up on some of them. Hey, Absolutely. that sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm in for all of the above. Yeah. Especially if a hundred a door doesn't satisfy you. That's the part <laughs> <only>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, if somebody's listening to this right now and they're, and they're wanting to reach out to you is the best place, your website, investormelondave.com. Yes, they can go there or honestly, any social media platform, YouTube, Instagram, we're even on TikTok now. And it's always you Investor Mel and Dave. You got millions of followers yet? You know what? We are brand new to TikTok. Just started actively January 1st. We decided to get on TikTok. And in about what, we're the 14th of the day of the recording. We have over 30,000 in, in, uh, in about 14 days. So we're, we're, I think we're doing pretty good for, for bringing brand new edit. On TikTok? That's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to, um, I just started TikTok putting some stuff. There you guys are. Okay. Let me, let me follow you. Oh, you're following me already. Right on. There you go. Yeah. Brad, are you following me? On, are you following me on Instagram as well? I just followed you on Instagram. Oh, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> TikTok, I just started, so I don't even know how to follow people. But if I see your if I see your videos in my swipe, I will. You'll, you'll give me a little. I'll, 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 someone stole my name there, so it's not the real Bradley. It's the real Bradley one. But okay. I also made a second account just in case it says the real real Bradley. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love somebody who steals the name, eh? <laughs> I woke up two days ago with, with like seven followers because I didn't post anything. And now I'm starting to post regularly. I, you know, I'm going to try to get a million followers on TikTok this year. Nice. Awesome. Amazing. I'm sure hear, you'll do I it. Well, I hear it's very uh, rich for virality. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't, it didn't take us, uh, well, yeah, 14 days and, and already just from posting consistently every day, we're doing three a day. I want to keep ramping that up. We're doing a couple of lives on there as well every day. So now if I'm a real estate investor trying to be like you guys, give me some tips. What should I do? Should I build a personal brand? Should I leverage social media? What are some hacks that you can give real estate investors that are listening right now? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely social media. Social media is huge. If people don't know you, they're not going to ever lend you or they're less likely, I should say, to lend you money um, or sell your property. So get on social media, create some kind of brand, um, provide a lot of value as well. Value is huge. People will appreciate that. Your lenders will be appre uh, appreciate that as well. And once you actually start getting into real estate and you do have lenders, give them even more value. I mean, we, we ensure to always pay back our lenders early. We communicate with them. We make it a win-win. So that way they're telling their friends and they're coming back to us over and over again, which enables us to continue to grow at a faster pace because all of a sudden our network just continues to grow as well. What about like mortgages and other ancillary services in the industry? What if, what if someone I know calls me and they're like, dude, I'd love to get their business. Who, whose business, who gets your business? 
I love people that understand creative financing, right? Like the big lenders don't like it. They don't do creative financing. So, you know, the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac aren't going to do allow owner financing and behind that type of thing. So people that get our business are the ones that understand the deal and that don't just see, you know, don't put us in that box. They think outside the box and, and get the creative financing. So that's what we love. Nice. How come you guys don't give out your last name? Well, we do. We just, I think our brand yeah. is Investor Mel and Dave. But yes, it's Mel and Dave Dupree. Yeah. Um, but no, I guess we kind of started with the Investor Mel and Dave <laughs> brand and, and we kind of stick to that. Yeah. <laughs> Dave will say it's like, oh, Madonna. Dave says we're like Madonna or something. Eh? Yeah. There you go. Well, the thing is, you guys are, you guys are relatable. People are going to like you just because you guys are likable. I think you guys are going to kick ass and take names. I can't wait to freaking, you know, watch what happens with you guys. If the bomb squad's freaking watching the video right now, they're going to realize you guys, these guys are like, you know, you want these two as your neighbor. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate We're that. Gonna watch your house for it. Yeah. What are your plans? Like, you guys seem like, you know, the, the, the perfect neighbors, like the kind that, you know, on the weekends you're out there opening your, you got any badass toys yet or no? Uh, yeah, well, we have a lot of snow, right? So we're getting equipped with snowmobiles. We just bought a cottage on the lake. So using none of our own money. Exactly. The cottage too. Yeah. <laughs> Creative financing yes. on the cottage. So we practice what we preach. <laughs> Cause, Cause here, here's the problem I see with most real estate investors that I know that are kicking ass. They understand the value of money and how to leverage it. So they really don't have any toys. And I'm always like, dude, why not go get the Ferraris and the Lambos and the Rolls Royces and the Lake Cottages and all this shit, um, you know, and enjoy life. And they're like, you kidding me, dude, I could invest that money over here. And, you know, well, eventually, when does it end? Like the whole point of getting rich is to live the live in the lap of luxury. No. Yeah. That's and that was a conversation reason. we had earlier in the year. We had the conversation and Dave said, you know, because we were talking about having a, a family, uh, a cottage for, for us and the kids. And, uh, and he said, well, are you going to wait till they're old enough or they're too old and are gone? And now we can't do the boats and the snowmobiles and all that kind of stuff. So uh, within a month, we had a call. <laughs> we had a call. <laughs> he convinced me by saying that. So it didn't take too much convincing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you that's sorry? No. no, sorry. I said he, he had to talk you into it. He did for that because I'm. I'm a, I, I love growth and I, I do, I, I'm a, I love business and I, I love growing. And, um, but of course I love spending time with, with my kids. And as soon as I said, yes, but the kids, you know, if you wait too long, you're not going to have the memories with the kids at the cottage. All right. <laughs> you know, good point. Absolutely. Let's, we can afford it. Why would we not do it? And we can keep while well, still, and that's the year when we bought the, co the cottage. Um, it's the year that we bought 119 apartments. So you can still have a lot of fun, a lot of play, and a lot of and it's fully financed. Of, yeah, None of our own money. A lot of uh, time for yourself as well, because at the end of you're right. Growth is important and it's fun, and exciting, but having having enjoying your life as well, right? Having a, a well balanced life in in all aspects. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Well, man, it's been awesome talking to you guys. I'm glad that you guys came on the show. I appreciate the time you gave us and the knowledge you gave to the bomb squad. If there's anything I can do for you guys, you know, let me know. I appreciate it. I know the bomb squad appreciates it. And folks, as always, if you share this out, you might be the reason somebody heard it and made a change in their life until next time. Keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.